Okay, this is lesson 8.2, transformations of logarithmic functions. In the first lesson, uh, in 8.1, we sketched our first logarithmic function, and that was the logarithmic function y equals log of x base 2. Today we're going to look at a different logarithmic function. We're going to look at the logarithmic function uh, y equals log x, or as we can call it, y equals log x base 10. This is known as the common logarithm, or the basic logarithmic function. And as we discussed in the first lesson, uh, writing the 10 is unnecessary. We can just refer to this as log x. The base 10 is assumed. If we assign a base and we call it 2, well then that would be log base 2. In this example, we're just looking at log base 10. So I've graphed the log base 10 function and it doesn't look super exciting. It's this curve that kind of runs almost right on top of the y-axis and then up crosses the x-axis here at this point and then proceeds to increase relatively slowly across the graph and then hits this point over here as well. So really just two clear points. Um, and if we look in the table, we can see what those two clear points are. I kind of gave a table of some values here. There's two nice points, uh, 1, 0, and 10, 1. So this is 1, 0, and this is uh, 10, 1. <clears throat> so uh, this is a graph of the common logarithm and uh, two key points. There's also, as you can kind of see here, a dashed line that's running on top of the y-axis, and that's because all of our logarithmic functions have those vertical asymptotes, as we discussed in the first video lesson. And the vertical asymptote for the common log, or any log parent function, is just x equals 0. That's our vertical asymptote. So uh, three pretty good features that we can use to graph the common logarithm. The two key points and the vertical asymptote. Um, this video lesson is about uh, transformations of uh, log functions. So we're going to look and review what those transformations do to functions, and then specifically what they do to this common logarithmic function. So let's scroll down. So I've got four transform graphs down here. I'm going to scroll down a little bit more in a second, but I want to look at this, uh, this description here. It says, as you can see with the transform graphs below, the transformations are consistent with the transformations we've been looking at for the last two years in math. We've got a times our function f. Inside the function, we have k times x minus d. And then outside the function, we have plus c. If we lay them on top of the log function, this is where you'd find each of those transformations. A would be in front of the log function multiplying. So I'm going to use yellow to designate my A. K would be inside the log function multiplying the X. And in this case, our X has been common factored. So we can clearly see our D, which is adding or subtracting to X. And outside the logarithm, close bracket, we have our C value that's either adding or subtracting. A goes in front of the logarithm and multiplies. So in our first example here, we have 10 log x. So our a value is 10. And if we think about what that a value of 10 would have done to any other function, well, that would have indicated a vertical stretch because we have a greater than 1. And if we compare the original log function at the top of our page to our new stretched log function, we see a curve that goes much more vertical. It still maintains that exact same x-intercept, but now that point that was at 10 and 1 is now 10 times higher because it's been stretched to 10, 10. So there's our vertical stretch. Moving on to k, k is inside the log multiplying the x. So in this case, our k is 4. And if we think about what a k of 4 does to the graph, well, a k of 4 would be a horizontal compression. And that's because our k value is bigger than 1. And remember, k works in the opposite fashion that a does. Uh, if we're used to those a values being bigger than 1, being stretches, k values bigger than 1 are horizontal compressions. So that means that we're going to get to those y values of 0 and 1 on the original function much faster. <clears throat> and if we look here, our y-intercept occurs much quicker than getting to 1, 0. The y-intercept is actually much closer to the y-axis, actually a quarter and 0. 
and it took a t value of 10x to get to the y value of 1, whereas we're getting there much quicker, and it actually happens around 1, 2, 2 and a half is where we get to our 1. So we've actually compressed the graph horizontally back much closer to the y-axis, <clears throat> and that's why we have something that looks a lot flatter. Now, it may not look flatter on the actual graph, but it's, a, it's reaching those y values much quicker. Um, next transformation is our d value, and if we look, our d value of 2, um, <clears throat> we have plus 2 here, um, but since it's x minus d, that d value is actually negative 2, so it's the opposite sign. Remember, opposite sign. So negative 2 means we've been shifting to the left, and if we look, our graph seems to be approaching a different line, not the y-axis anymore, but instead the line x equals negative 2. And I'll write that right here. That has shifted our horizontal asymptote off the x-axis, sorry, y-axis, over to the left 2, and now we have a horizontal asymptote, horizontal, a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 2. Sorry, a horizontal translation shifts the vertical asymptote, vertical asymptote, to the left 2 units. And our shape looks the same, except we just shifted all those points over to the left. So instead of getting to a y value of 1 at 10, we're getting there two spots earlier at 8, and instead of having our y-intercept at uh, 1, 0, we've shifted two spots to the left, and now it's negative 1, 0. Same points, just two to the left. And our last one's a vertical shift. We have a shift here of plus 3 down, and we have that c-value on the outside of the log. It's kind of hard to tell sometimes whether the plus 3 is inside the log or outside the log, so to designate the difference, we use the bracket. Bracket around x plus 2 means that that 2 is inside the log function, and it's a d-value. No bracket means that that value is outside the log function, and it's a c-value. All we've done here is shifted the graph up three spots. So instead of uh, 1, 0 being a point, we've gone up three points, and now we're at uh, 1, 3. And instead of 10, 1 being a value, we've shifted up three spots, and now 10, 4 is a, is a point on the curve. So how do we graph using transformations? Well, the exact same way we've been graphing using transformations before, just with a new parent. The trickiest part of this is actually getting the graph of the parent function. It requires a couple steps. And then the rest is the same. We use mapping notation by picking out a, k, d, and c, writing our mapping notation, uh, using our mapping notation to get new coordinates, and then plotting our graph. So we're going to go through that exercise right now. <clears throat> Use mapping notation to sketch the function g of x. g of x is negative 2 log of x minus 4 base 2, note the base, and we're going to state the domain and range. Um, the parent function in this case is y equals log x base 2, not base 10, it's not the common log, it's base 2. Uh, how does that change things? Well, all it does is change the parent function, the original points we're going to graph. And I've graphed the parent function here. So you could pick points off that graph, but I'm going to show you how to do it if I didn't give you the original graph. To get the parent functions table, the log of x base 2 table, I'm going to suggest that you start by getting the inverse, the exponential table, because this is something that we know how to do. We know how to get a table for the exponential. We can use the values of x, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and then just like in the first lesson, we raise our base 2 to the exponent, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, to get our y values of a quarter, a half, 1, 2, and 4. To find the inverse, just like in the first lesson, we switch our x and y values. So we have a quarter, a half, 1, 2, 4. Negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. And now we have our table for our parent function log of x base 2. This is the table we're going to apply our mapping notation to. So we have a table, we do our inverse, and then we map. How do we map? Well, we map by looking at our equation and picking out a, k, c, and d. So in this example, we don't have a, k, c, and d. We only have two of them. We have a value in front of log multiplying, negative 2, and we have a value inside the log function being added or subtracted, 4. 
And if you can identify what those transformations are by matching them up with our transformation notation, the D value of 4 and the A value of negative 2. So we have only a D and an A. So what's that mean? Well, what that means is when we write our mapping notation, the x over k plus d and the ay plus c, the mini equations we've been using to do transformations of other functions, <clears throat> we have x over k, we don't have a k value, so we use 1, plus d. Well, d in this case is 4, so plus 4, which would be simplified just x plus 4. So x plus 4 is our mapping notation for our new axis, comma, ay plus c. Well, a we've identified as negative 2. y plus c, we're not adding anything. To not add anything, it'd be plus 0. So we end up with just negative 2y. And there's our completed mapping notation, negative 2y. So to get our new values, we're going to add 4 to all of our x values, and we're going to multiply all of our y values by negative 2. Adding 4 to fractions can be a little tricky. If you use decimals, it might help. And decimals for graphing actually makes it a little bit easier. So a quarter is 0.25. If we add 4 to that, we get 4.25. You can use the fractions if you wish. I'd use the fractions if I didn't have nice decimals like this. Um, a half plus 4 is 4.5. 1 plus 4 is 5. 2 plus 4 is 6. 4 plus 4 is 8. There's our x's. Our y's, we're going to multiply all these by negative 2. Negative 2 times negative 2 is 4. Negative 2 times negative 1 is 2. 0 times negative 2 is 0. 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. And 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. So now we've got a new set of points. So let's graph them. 4.254. <clears throat> well, that one's a little tricky, but 1, 2, 3, 4. 0.25 wouldn't be halfway. It'd be a quarter of the way. And we'd be going all the way up to 4. So we'd have a dot right and 4.5, 2, well, 4.5 would be here, 2 would be here, another point right here, 5, 0, 6, negative 2, and 7, 8, negative 4. There's our points. And if we think about this for a second, we've taken the original and shifted 4 to the right. What that shifts as well, well, we have a, remember, a vertical asymptote of x equals 0. We need to shift that over as well, 4 to the right. We now have x equals 4 as our vertical asymptote. So I'm going to add that to my graph as well. x equals 4. Be sure when you're graphing your logarithmic functions that you include the asymptote. It'll be kind of clear where it's approaching from the table, but it's good to transform that asymptote as well. Connect the curve. All right, uh, two properties, domain and range. Well, if we look at our graph, it looks like the only x values that can exist are ones that are on the right side of our asymptote. So that means x must be greater than 4. We don't touch the asymptote, so not equal to. So our domain is x belongs to real, such that x is greater than 4. And for all of our logarithmic functions, our range is just y belongs to real. And there we go. We've transformed our first logarithmic function. We're going to do another one in classes or warm-up tomorrow. Um, the last thing I need to show you is something you've done before, but something we're going to do uh, really quickly here over uh, is writing the equation of a transformed logarithmic function from a description. So at this point, you have two choices. If you want to give it a shot on your own, you can. Just pause the video and uh, give this a shot, and you can check the solutions uh, on the website or you can scroll to the end of the video and see the solutions as well. Uh, I'm going to do the example, so if you want me to walk you through it, go ahead and uh, stay with me here and we'll walk through it. Um, <clears throat> if you're going to try it on your own before you pause the video, uh, just remember that f of x will, can have uh, four transformations. a goes in front of the log. Um, the base would go here, and if you read the description, you'll find out what base it is. Inside the log, you can have a k and a d. And then outside the log, you can add C, and those are the four transformations. So if you want, pause the video, try to pick out the A, K, C, and D,
put them in the equation and see if you got it right. Otherwise, stick with me and we'll work through it together. <clears throat> okay, um, our logarithmic function has a base function or a parent function of the common log. So log x, the base is 10, but again, we don't have to write the base of 10, so we just have log x. So we're going to use log with a base 10, so we won't write our base there. And now we're going to read through the description and see if we can pick out the transformations. We're looking for an a, a k, a d, and a c. I'm going to try to color code this. So we're going to go looking for a first. I'm going to look for it with yellow. A is anything about a vertical stretch or vertical compression. It's actually our next sentence here. Has been vertically compressed by a factor of 3. Vertical compression means that our value is somewhere between 0 and 1. And since it's a factor of 3, the A value must be 1 over 3. Compressing would be like multiplying by a third. Horizontal stretch by a factor of 4. Well, horizontal stretch, that's talking about a K value. We've got a horizontal stretch by a factor of 4 and reflected in the y-axis. Reflecting over the y-axis would be a horizontal reflection. So if we remember, reflecting horizontally means k is going to be negative. And since we're horizontally stretched by 4, a stretch, a horizontal stretch, would be a value between 0 and 1 for k. And since it's by a factor of 4, it would be a quarter. Uh, horizontal translation, that's our d value. Horizontal translation, here we go. Horizontal translation, so the vertical asymptote is negative 2, which means that we've been shifted to the left. So our d value is going to be negative 2. And last but not least, c value, vertically translated, 3 units down. 3 units down. That's our C value, would be negative 3. So now we just have to rewrite the equation, filling in A, K, C, and D. So I'm going to do that below. We call our function f of x. A is a third, so I'm going to replace A with a third. Log bracket. K is negative a quarter. Remember, common factor out of x and D, so we can clearly see our D. D is negative 2, which means the sign changes because we have negative negative 2, it would be like plus 2. And plus C, C is negative 3, so we've got negative 3. Okay? Um, transformation is done the exact same way as uh, in previous lessons and previous years. Um, just new parent function log with any base. And uh, that's it for lesson 8.2. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.